Dave. This is Dave Early. And the guy riding ahead of him is GT rider Dave Unkovic. They share two common passions, a love of Thailand, their adopted country, and a love of travel and adventure on large, powerful motorbikes. The two Daves are on the first leg of a Golden Triangle Loop, one of the great bike rides of the world, starting in Chiang Mai and making its way via Mae Salong, Turd Thai, Mae Sai and back to Chiang Mai. A journey that can take about four solid days or as long as you like. The journey takes you past some spectacular natural attractions as well as amazing man-made wonders and historical sites such as this one, Chedi Cow, the Crystal Pagoda in Wat Taton. Having dinner one night in Chiang Mai, I met a gentleman who was traveling around the world on his motorcycle and he had come from Papua New Guinea to Chiang Mai and he told me, well, if you like motorcycles, he says, there's a guy here you should meet. His name is David Unkovic and he's usually at the cafe restaurant and we're going on a ride together in a couple days. You can probably find him there. So I did. I went in and found David sitting there reading a newspaper and I introduced myself and I says, well, I understand you're going for a ride in a couple of days. Could I come along? And David just kind of looked up and said, yeah, no worries, mate. Suit yourself. And I said, well, I need to rent a motorcycle. He says, well, you can rent one across the street over there. So I did, and that was our first ride together. And over the last 10 years, I think we've clocked up thousands of kilometers riding together. And motorcycling now has become just a way of life here for me, I think basically the adventure motorcycling and the traveling and the things you can see in Thailand is what's kept me here this long. Oh, it always feels good to be here on the, on the mountains. On the back side here is, is the, Burmese, the Burmese border up there. You've got an army bunkers up there. You feel as if you're coming to somewhere remote here. Many years ago, there was a bit of a battle of name Khun Sa. They lobbed a couple of uh, grenades or bombs into the uh, shells into the river here. And there's a bit of a dispute going on. The dispute actually started back in 1969 when Khun Sa emerged from the jungles of Burma to become the most notorious drug lord in Southeast Asia. The Daves were keen to find out more about him, so at the village of Ban Ter Thai, they travelled up a winding mountain road to the fascinating Khun Sa Museum. This was actually the drug lord's old fortress, a structure he had the audacity to set up on Thai soil. Right, so what we've got here, this is the old camp and headquarters of Khun Sa. Up here is a, is a statue of Khun Sa they built after he, uh, he died. And then over here is uh, his camp and headquarters where he used to live over here. And there's a mess room and everything in here. Over the other side, over here, there's, there's a kitchen and, uh, and there's a stable where they had the horses there. Believe it or not, this man was once Khun Sa's public relations officer. He told the Daves that the people around here think his old boss was a great guy because he built this village, including the hospital and the school. He was certainly a colourful character with some interesting ideas, to say the least. For example, in 1988, he offered to sell his entire opium crop to the Australian government for $50 million a year over a period of eight years which would have virtually stopped the heroin trade into both Australia and the United States overnight. But the government rejected his offer, saying that the Australian government does not pay criminals to refrain from criminal activity. Undeterred by this rejection, he made a similar offer to the Americans, who responded by enlisting the aid of the Thai armed forces and launching an offensive against his base. This was a was a like a hidden empire there in in the in the uh, late seventies and eighties when Khun Sa first moved in here and there was no Thai government forces in here at all and this was their own little like kingdom they had to themselves and they weren't bothered by anyone and then in the late eighties with pressure from the Americans they they attacked to force him out. 
Today things are fairly quiet in the hills of the Golden Triangle, although it wasn't always like this. Mesa Long has a fairly turbulent past. When the uh, nationalist Chinese or Chiang Kai-shek soldiers uh, lost their battle with the communists in China, they fled first into Burma, then into uh, North Thailand and settled here. Uh, to raise money in those days, it was famous for its opium growing. And in the 70s, it was known as the heroin capital of the world. The Daves then took a picturesque ride along the mountain tops of May Salong, where they stopped off for some light refreshment at the Sweet May Salong, run by Ton and his wife Jinnah Park. They used to live in Australia, but decided to return to the mountains of Thailand to pursue a different dream. I study photography in Melbourne for two and a half years. And I got uh, I got a bachelor degree in Bangkok about uh, advertising. These days, Ton's photographic efforts are confined to snapshots of his pet dogs and children, and he's kept pretty busy creating gastronomic masterpieces such as genuine English Devonshire Thank teas. You. Look at those babies. And then there was another surprise in store. Dave Unkovich's old mate Richard and his wife had dropped by. Over more scones, jam and cream, the riders swapped tales of their latest adventures. You don't feel threatened at all when you're riding here in the mountains alone? Never. I've never had anything other than uh, respect. And uh, because we're mature men, they, their culture is to treat us uh, well and respect us. And I, I, uh, I bought this from the, the uh -huh. veterans in um, Chiang Kong and when the military people w w I pull up at a checkpoint and they, s they see it, it's uh, Anzac Day type uh, thing and they straight through sir. Uh, I, sometimes, I, I don't have a guidebook at all uh, and I just rely on your map um, and uh, the GPS which is a new, uh, a new thing for me uh, before I just used to you know, aim north and see what happened. Okay. If you've enjoyed this story and would like to share more of Dave's adventures, visit this website and keep watching. You're watching Destination Thailand. Chart your course for all points. Scores for all. Paddy is most exciting. Paddy is most index. Paddy is most in point. Has most in new heights. In new heights. Towers 30 stories over the sword after hilltop on cool after hill it on cool after hill of Pratun after hill world class after hill world class after hill world class after hill design class after hill that own class after hill books the own class after hill books the own class after hill thinks the own class after hill will go in your club the hill and this is your club the hill vistas or club the hill vistas or club the great journey of their lives begins here a place where skills are developed and values are cherished where friendships are forged and responsibility is encouraged, where challenges are faced and talent blooms. Give your children the best education. Regions International School, Bangkok, home of well-rounded leaders for the future. Luxury takes many forms. The Riviera Dom Tien captures the very best of today's lifestyle. Building on the success of Riviera Wongamat, Riviera Dom Tien will offer the ultimate in gracious living. 46 stories, stylish modern facilities, a family paradise just steps from the beach. Riviera Dom Tien, a new journey begins. You're watching Destination Thailand.
No one knows the roads of Thailand's north better than GT rider Dave Unkovich and his travelling buddy Dave Early. On two sets of two wheels, they explore the mountains, valleys, villages and sites of the country's highways and pathways. From major motorways to dusty beaten tracks, we've travelled with the Daves to explore the famous Golden Triangle. Difficult usually to get up, but I always make the effort to come here for this one. It's always been a, a separate area from almost like the rest of Thailand. Uh, for many years, the government had no road here, uh, so all the people come in from, from Burma. So you've got Chinese here, you've got Shan, you've got Arka, you've got Lahu. This is one of the biggest mix of hill tribe villages. And you've also got all, all different religions here. There's Christian, there, there's animist, there's, uh, uh, there's Buddhist. All mix and there's Muslim as well, there's also a mosque here as well and everyone blends in together and mixes together, there's no agro whatsoever, it's a very good feeling in the town here. On any journey in Thailand, an important part of the early morning's activities is the offering of food to the monks who walk through the nation's streets. You will get a prayer in return. In this way the recipients accumulate merit which stands them in good stead during this life and especially the next one. With the spiritual side of things taken care of, it's down to the business of breakfast. Some people might find this a bit much to take first thing in the morning, but you certainly can't complain about the freshness of the fare on offer here. And the locals love putting on a bit of a show for the camera and potentially seeing themselves on Facebook. These are, these are 10 baht each. And she sells about 800 baht a day. Comes at Marquis Mong Don Chao. Comes at 5 o'clock and then goes home about 10. Kaban Ki Mong, Sip Mong. Goes home at 10 o'clock. Every morning, five, so five hours a day. It's important to haggle with the vendors, but not too much. A few smiles will go a long way to ensuring you get a good deal. <laughs> From the hustle and bustle of the market, the Daves hit the road again. So many roads that are very nice roads, but they wind you through the mountains, through isolated areas. You can ride at your own pace and just kind of gather your thoughts and relax and appreciate how lucky you are to be able to ride in an area like this. Much of this area hasn't been taken over by tourism. They're starting to cater more to the tourists to make it comfortable traveling, but they've never relied on tourism for their sustenance. They've been self-sustaining for decades and will probably continue to do so. So you get more of a natural atmosphere, more of a natural feeling of not only what Thailand is now, but what it has been for many years in the past and it just makes an enjoyable getaway. You more or less forget your problems and come up here and can relax in your own thoughts and it's very laid back atmosphere. It's also important to map a route in advance and with the help of a GPS like this one produced by Garmin, you can plan a pretty detailed back road excursion. We're currently, according to the GPS, right here at this spot and just to my left, about two kilometers, just over the mountain ridge line there would be Burma. The mountain ridge line usually offsets the border here. If you do take a wrong turn, make the most of the opportunity, like Dave, and practice your tie. The local people are always happy to join in a conversation, even if some sign language is required. There's ah, a director here. Hey. 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 
As the journey continued, the Daves wove past a major tea plantation. These tea plantations are as far out as you can get on the Burmese border. Uh, we're on the, basically on the ridge line here and you just go over the back side of the mountain that's on the Burmese side. 500 metres down the road there's an army checkpoint there. There's a trail that goes through into Burma to a, a Shan army camp. So you can't go any further, this is it. Then a brief stop to explore an interesting historical site. Oh, right on the, on the Burmese border again with uh, Thailand and Myanmar. The road behind me is actually the border down here, down this way. One side of the road is, is Thailand, one side of the, of the road is uh, Burma. This is a Thai army camp we're in. And over here on the left hand side in the distance is a Burmese army camp. But the area on, on the Burmese side of the border was once upon a time controlled by the Shan who were forced out by the Burmese, uh, by the Wa and the villages down below are now occupied by Wa, but this one army camp I, I believe is a Burmese camp. We have many people come through Chiang Mai that are travelling from country to country or doing world tours and Chiang Mai has kind of become a hub for motorcycle enthusiasts. Riding in the north has a lot of very good roads. Um, you can ride safely on highways, you can come up into the mountains and still have good roads. And uh, As long as you use reasonable care and caution like you would riding anywhere else, I would say it's fairly safe. If you've enjoyed this story and would like to share more of the Dave's adventures, visit this website and keep watching. You're watching Destination Thailand. Luxury takes many forms. The Riviera Dom Tien captures the very best of today's lifestyle. Building on the success of Riviera Wongamat, Riviera Dom Tien will offer the ultimate in gracious living. 46 stories, stylish modern facilities, a family paradise just steps from the beach. Riviera Jong Tien, a new journey begins. Nigel Kornick is one of the most experienced developers in Thailand. Stephen O'Dell from Soda is an award-winning architect. Colin Okashimo is Asia's modern landscape Zen master. This is the team behind Padia's exciting new project, South Point. Developed by Kingdom Property, South Point is financed by Kung Thai Bank and has full EIA approval. Invest with the best and don't miss the point. You're watching Destination Thailand. What's the best way to explore Thailand? If you don't fancy getting jammed into the back of a pickup, there is an alternative. It's dangerous, but it's fun. In all the major tourist towns, it's easy and cheap to rent a scooter or motorbike. You'll probably have to deposit your passport, but chances are you won't need to show your driving license. Just plunk down the cash and you're away. When you get the bike, you go to Pai to Mae Hong Son, to Chiang Rai, that's good. Yeah. I'm not in Thailand. 
There is a safer and more comfortable alternative to renting a bike. With more than 20 million airport arrivals in 2012, the Thai car rental business is booming. Avis has 18% of the market, but the German brand Sixt is growing in their rear view mirror. With your own wheels, you're free to explore some of the most beautiful places on Earth. The roads in Thailand are pretty good these days. Ten years ago, you'd be cruising along and abruptly the tarmac would disintegrate into a quagmire of jagged boulders and treacherous ruts. Uh, these days, you might run into the odd pothole or two, but generally it's smooth sailing as it were. Finding your way around is actually quite straightforward. There's lots of good maps. GPS coverage is quite extensive. Even the free app on your phone will get you around. And lots of the road signs are in English. With the added bonus, you can play the creative spelling game see how many different English spellings of the same place name you can find. Endless fun. Discovering Thailand on your own wheels. Slightly risky. Visit us on Very Facebook and rewarding. tell us what you like. Or check out our website at www.destinationthailand.tv Our presenters have their hair cut, coloured and styled at Moga Salons. Now available at eight locations in Thailand. Our presenters use Philip B's organic skin and hair products. Available now at the Emporium, Bangkok. This program was brought to you by South Point Patia.